We're going to Dr. Paul Craig Roberts here in just a moment. We, we need to stop being afraid. We'll just go to him right now, but I do got some sponsors I got to plug here before we go to this next break. Dr. Roberts, so much is going on. So much is happening. The world is really starting to wake up, but at the same time, the tyranny is stomping around. I want to get into the economy, some of the other articles you've written. But, but first, uh, DSK, Dominique Strauss-Kahn, no sooner are they announced they're going to drop the charges against him and this woman's reportedly, according to New York Post, New York Times, connected to mafia, reportedly a prostitute. Uh, you know, we, we have uh, minions of the president, Sarkozy, who he was going to run against. He was already 10 points ahead in most polls, admitting that they put out the news of his arrest before he was even arrested or it was in the news because they, quote, had agents in the hotel. I mean, clearly this is political. A new woman popping up with rape charges. Uh, so it looks like he, uh, they are really after him. I don't know if he's a good guy, a bad guy. I don't like the IMF and globalists. But uh, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, former editor of the Wall Street Journal, head of policy department of uh, Treasury, father of Reaganomics, uh, you called this really first. Uh, I mean, you had the guts to come out and not defend DSK, but say it stunk to high heaven uh, like a you know, field full of dead, dead cows or something. What's, what's really going on here? Well, you know, Alex, we'll never know, but uh, it certainly looks uh, like it's a political thing. Um, it, it could come from various sources, not just Sarkozy, who was frightened by uh, Strauss-Kahn standing in the polls in the French, upcoming French presidential election, but Strauss-Kahn had recently been saying things which alarmed uh, the bankers. Uh, he said, you know, he was meeting with uh, the American economist, uh, Joseph Stieglitz, who is a, a big critic of the bailouts of the bankers on the backs of the ordinary people. And Strauss-Kahn was meeting with him and had begun raising questions about the use of uh, the IMF in loading the bailouts on the backs of ordinary people. He also said it was necessary to re-regulate the financial system because the, uh, the deregulation, which was supposed to result in self-regulation, uh, hadn't worked. And he was making other noises that a member of the global uh, ruling class uh, uh, <clears throat> is not supposed to make. And so whether he actually meant them or whether he was saying it in case he decided to run on the socialist ticket for the French presidency, you know, PR for ordinary people, uh, we don't know. But it certainly alarmed uh, the bankers. You see, one of, the, one of the giveaways is that the New York prosecutor, Cy Vance, put him in solitary confinement in Riker prison on suicide watch until he resigned from the IMF. Then they let him out. <laughs> well, if you're a guy, and, and you see, they did all this before they had even investigated. So they stick him in a notorious prison in solitary confinement on suicide watch. Now, anything can happen to you in, that cir in those circumstances with those public announcements. And so he promptly resigned from the IMF. Well... There's so many suspicious things about it. Um, it's always, of course, entirely possible that it was all uh, a plot by the uh, hotel maid prostitute, whatever she was. Uh, uh, afterwards, she may have said, hey, I can really get some money out of this guy. And it could all have been her plot. But it would not explain how Sarkozy's political operatives knew of the arrest before the New York police announced it. It, would, it doesn't really explain uh, the fact that the New York police, they essentially raped Strauss-Kahn's reputation, didn't they? The way they treated this, the way they handled it. Um, there's so the many, way they uh, doled out details right up front, which they wouldn't normally do uh, to assassinate his character. He was right. not getting a... A, a fair lead up to a trial. He was not getting proper due process. And even if he was guilty, uh, better that one, you know, uh, uh, guilty man go free than 10 uh, 
uh, innocent people go to prison. And I get emails saying, why are you defending Strauss Kahn? At first, I was like, well, he's an IMF banker. I hate these people. He's scum. This is what they do. But when I think back to Bill Clinton, who had to pay off all the women for the reports of rape, where he bites their faces to hold them down and all this, Clinton got away with that. You know, the, the, the New York police are historically notoriously corrupt. I mean, if Khan was in good standing with the establishment, he would be left alone from my research and experience. So so this whole this whole array of things points towards that and his talk of forgiving debt, uh, his uh, you know, meeting with Sticklitz, uh, he, he, uh, talking about it, saying the dollar would be dead soon. All of this, uh, clearly they went after him. And now, as soon as they announce they're going to drop the charges, up pops another woman right on time like rows of shark teeth, like that torpedo didn't hit him. So they're flooding chamber two to fire another one. I mean, this is, this is getting really obvious. Uh, yeah, I'm afraid it is, actually. Um, of course, there's an innocent explanation for the second case. Uh, it could be uh, that uh, what, what this woman and France thinks is uh, attempted rape, could have all been a misunderstanding. It could actually have happened. She agreed to meet him, apparently, according to the French press, uh, in an apartment that wasn't his address, alone. And she may have sent a signal she didn't intend to send, <laughs> and he may have misinterpreted it. So something could have happened, but you know, what is attempted rape? I mean, it's not right. Nothing. Well, that's this feminist thing where they teach the women in public uh, colleges, as you know, Dr. Roberts, now that all sex is rape. And right. that even if you didn't like, it's kind of like the WikiLeaks thing. If yeah. you didn't like it afterwards, if you didn't like the sex, it's rape. <laughs> I know. It's all, it's, it's all um, ridiculous. And uh, I, I agree that there's more here than we'll ever know. It does smack of conspiracy. It really does. Um, <clears throat> there are other explanations, but until we can figure out how Sarkozy's operatives knew about this before it was announced publicly, publicly um, we uh, have to be suspicious. Now, Alex, this French case, it probably came to light now. Uh, I, I mean, another... Uh, explanation. It came to light now because uh, they had the New York case to hook it to. You know, when it when it first came up in France that she was going to make this case, uh, everyone was convinced that, that uh, Strauss-Kahn was guilty and would be convicted. And so that may have given uh, confidence to the French lawyer to uh, believe the woman's story and and had to bring it forward. But now that the New York case has collapsed, we don't know what will happen to the French case. Uh, unless it has a lot of independent strength. And if it does have, you have to wonder why it's eight years old <laughs> before it surfaces as a, as a charge. So I don't think we really know about this, but I certainly agree that um, a member of the ruling global elite would not be treated this way unless he was perceived as a threat. Well, look at how they let Madoff for a year stay at home and be left alone. We've got uh, upwards of 100 billion stolen. And in every case, I mean, they treat these guys like royalty, even when they're forced to arrest them for something after 11 years of insiders exposing exactly what Bernie Madoff was doing. So the whole thing stinks to high heaven. now. Uh, expanding uh, in, uh, into the economy, Dr. Roberts. Well, before we get to the economy, the Russian um, head envoy to NATO says, yes, the ground invasion is on for September, October. Uh, the Israeli uh, 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 publications are saying the special forces are going in this month and then in the next two months, full ground invasion. Exactly what I got from Fort Hood, and I got letters from Hood and calls on air when I ask military listeners about it, and since a bunch of other, uh, since that a bunch of other contacts have come into us, that that if Gaddafi doesn't fall, they can't assassinate him with these bombs. They now admit they are trying to kill him. Uh, you know, if that peace action fails, that a larger peace action of the first Cav under three corps. Uh, is going to have to bring more peace and more love and more humanitarian assistance to Libya. And I saw a video that we aired live when Tarpley was on with us last Friday 
At first, it looked like 200,000. Then they pulled out. It had to be a half million or more. He, he reported grenade launchers on the street, almost everyone with AK-47s. Uh, now it's upwards of 2 million. Kalishnikovs handed out a million RPGs, rocket-propelled grenades for folks that don't know what that is. Uh, I mean, if just 5% of those people actually aim at a target and shoot, this is going to be hell on earth for the NATO troops. But uh, the man of peace, though, w is dedicated to bringing them peace there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and the whole thing is strictly illegal. It's a war crime. What, what the United States is doing, what NATO is doing, these are exactly what the Nazis were executed for after the Nuremberg trials. This is naked aggression. It's a war crime. And they can't even claim the cover of the UN resolution because all the UN agreed to was a no-fly zone. And no-fly doesn't mean uh, to attack the, <laughs> the Qaddafi people uh, or to uh, intervene militarily in order to overthrow him. That, that is not what they had any cover for. So, and the whole world just stands and takes it. And it's obviously illegal. It's a war crime. It's an amazing thing. Just like everything else that happens. <laughs> it's, all, it's all amazing. Dr. Roberts, why are you against peace? <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, this is a Nobel Peace laureate uh, who yeah. lied and said they'd be there days, not weeks, who lied and said they weren't yeah. trying to kill Gaddafi, and now NATO and the top U.S. general admit to Congress they are trying to kill him. I mean, why, why is lying about a war, lying about how long you're there, breaking international law, national law, uh, trying to assassinate people, arming known al-Qaeda in the East, why are you against something as wonderful? <laughs> uh, 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 sir, are you... You're, I mean, why are you so hateful? Yeah. Well, you know, um, Alex, um, we've lost the law. There's no, there's no rule of law left. The government is not accountable to law. I mean, Clinton wasn't for Serbia. Uh, this really accelerated under Bush Cheney. And now Obama has validated it, you know, because uh, the Obama administration has ruled that there will be no accountability for any of the crimes of the Bush administration, you know, the torture, the uh, illegal detentions. Uh, uh, the that was peace as well. Come on, don't be a conspiracy <laughs> theory. Oh, sure, that was all. See, what, you know, peace, what it means, I suppose, is uh, war is peace. Now, that's more like it. Hey, you're starting to be a little bit more sensible. <laughs> war is peace, and uh, we're going to have a lot of peace. <laughs> and, 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 Dr. Roberts, They've told us that the economy is uh, been out of recession for two years as all the jobless numbers increase and as a lot of economists say we're in a depression. But they say war is peace and they say this is a crackerjack economy. <laughs> right. <laughs> and who are you as a uh, Forbes listed, you know, top economist? Who are you to have an opinion? If you have an opinion differing from the ruling class, you're a conspiracy theorist. That's exactly the case. That's what I wrote not long ago. A uh, conspiracy theorist is anyone who uh, pays any attention to facts or analysis. <laughs> 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 and, uh, but, you know, we can laugh, but I, it is really serious. It, it should be frightening to see uh, the United States government, which poses as the light of the world, you know, the model of, of uh, the rule of law, uh, bringing democracy and freedom, and, and it, it, <laughs> it's totally lawless. Everything that's done is lawless, and they flout it. And we've now had uh, uh, a case where a federal judge was lied to by, by the FBI in the court. And he, uh, he read them the riot act for lying to him, but he did nothing about it because they claim that they don't have to tell the truth to judges because uh, it's national security. Yeah, they're allowed to perjure themselves. <laughs> right. Which is freedom. That's right. They, they, they can uh, break every law. They don't, the, the courts have no jurisdiction. Congress has none. So... 
people really should be scared to death. They should be scared to death. Well, yeah, because they're getting ready to launch even bigger wars. The economy's imploding. They're setting up domestic police state control grids. Uh, that's why they're so confident, because they're committed to go into a hot tyranny in this country, Dr. Roberts. They're committed. That's why they don't care. I, I wouldn't be surprised that everything suggests that, doesn't it? <laughs> well, I don't think a lot of minions of this system have studied history like you and I have. I don't think all the average folks that are kind of going along with this have any idea of the type of horrid creature they're releasing out of that box. Uh, I mean, this is this is hell that's being released. That's right. They have no idea. I agree. They, they were all out waving the flags the other day and pretending that they have liberty. <laughs> all we've got left is the free speech, and now they're openly organizing against that. More and more calls to arrest conspiracy theorists. Look at the... Uh, which means arrest the heretics, the questioners. Look at Cass Sunstein. Uh, look at all of it, Dr. Roberts. I know. I know it's amazing that you carry on. You, well, we're going to. Are you kidding? We're really getting a lot of folks to wake up. It's just that people think they've woken up. They need to wake up to just how bad it is. Let's do five more minutes on the other side. I want to ask you about the economy and where you see that going. And uh, this weekend, all the big media attacking the Constitution like it was a dead cockroach or something. That needs to be, I don't know how much you watch the news this weekend. I barely even paid attention. And there was a full-out assault. Kurt Nemo's got a report about it today. Uh, but there was a full-out assault uh, on the Constitution that was outmoded, old, bad. Uh, but the Constitution is new ideas. The stuff that the establishment's bringing in is regurgitated ancient tyranny. I mean, the classic forms of tyranny, human nature stays the same. What do you make of the system coming out of the closet and saying, get rid of the Constitution and you will be delivered to Valhalla? <laughs> well, they've already gotten rid of it. And we now have a Caesar. And whoever the president is, he's now a Caesar as long as he's at war. So, and it's up to the president whether or not uh, we're at war. So, we, we have a Caesar. We don't have a, a, a representative democracy. And there's no rule of law. That what, whatever the president does or says is what happens. And there's no check on that, neither from the courts and nor from the Congress. And it doesn't matter who we elect because that's just a facade. The person in the office, the office is a Caesar. So whoever's there has the power of a Caesar. And that's what we have. You know, like... Uh, we're at, we're at war in Libya without uh, the War Powers Act. We're, we're at peace with Libya. <laughs> well, in in all sense, we're at peace because war is peace. But um, don't be an so extremist here, sir. Don't engage in critical thinking. I mean, conspiracy theory. <laughs> you know, my book, The uh, Tyranny of Good Intentions, uh, which came out uh, 11 years ago, I, I concluded it by saying the Constitution was dead and that the country would soon follow unless there was a constitutional revival, and there's not been one. And no one seems to care. The law schools don't care, the bar associations, uh, nothing happens. So uh, we have uh, acquiesced to a Caesar. I don't think there's any going back. And now the question is, will the economy collapse out from under them? And it could well do, but it, it may be why we're having all these wars, that what they may be trying to do is to secure control over oil so that the dollar remains the reserve of currency and everyone in the world has to continue uh, to pay dollars for oil and therefore you know, use dollars to buy, to fund our debt. So it, it may well be that how they're trying to avert economic collapse is by war in, in the Middle East and war on uh, the oil-producing regions. So that may be what's uh, going on. Now, your newest book is War of the Worlds, How the Economy Was Lost, available uh, all over the web, Amazon.com, and also at the bottom of the articles you write at Infowars.com. We have a link to it as well. Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, thank you for joining us for some critical thinking, some common sense historical perspective, and also an economic look as the former head of policy at the Treasury. Uh, but again, the fact that you have an opinion on the economy is a conspiracy theory because your opinion differs from that of Obama that tells us...